Module 4, Lesson 11, Homework. Number 1. Jenny's mom says she has an hour before it's bedtime. Jenny spends one-third of the hour texting a friend and one-fourth of the time brushing her teeth and putting on her pajamas. She spends the rest of her time reading her book. How many minutes did Jenny read? Okay, so we want to... She spends the rest of her time reading a book, and that's how much time we want to know about. So... We don't know how much time she spent reading her book yet. We don't even know what fraction of the time she spent reading her book. So if she spends one-third texting and one-fourth brushing her teeth, she has one-third plus one-fourth plus something is equal to one, the whole hour. You could even draw a tape diagram to show that. So one-third of the time was texting, one-fourth brushing your teeth, and the rest was reading. And it all adds up to one hour. So let's first figure out what this missing piece is. So we need to find a common denominator. Three and four, I'm going to use 12 as our common denominator. So one-third, we need to make into twelfths, is four-twelfths, and one-fourth would be 3 twelfths, so 4 twelfths plus 3 twelfths plus something equals 1. So 7 twelfths plus what would equal 1? That missing piece to get us to 1 or 12 twelfths would be 5 twelfths. But that doesn't totally answer our question. So she sends 5 twelfths of the hour reading, but we want to know how many minutes. So how many minutes is in 5 twelfths of an hour? Well, to know, we need to convert from minute, from hours to minutes. So one hour is equal to 60 minutes. So I'm going to do 5 twelfths times 60, which will be equal to 5 times 60 over 12. And I'm going to reduce right away because 12 can go into 60 so I'm going to divide by 12 and that's 1 and 60 divided by 12 is 5 so now my problem is 5 times 5 over 1 which is 25 over 1 which is 25 so she spends 25 minutes reading Number two, A plus auto body is painting designs on a customs car. They had 18 pints of blue paint on hand. They used half of it for the flames and a third of it for the sparks. They need seven and three fourths pints of blue paint to paint the next design. How many more pints of blue paint do they need to buy? So they have 18 pints, they used half of it, and then they used a third of it. So let's figure out what half of 18 is and what one third of 18 is and remember of means times but thinking about it it's almost easier here to think of of what is half of 18 half of 18 is 9 and a third of 18 one third of 18 if you were to split that into three equal pieces that would be 6 so they have if we added those together 15 gallons that they've used which means that they have three gallons left because they have 18 they used that 15 so 18 minus 15 is 3 they need 7 and 3 fourths for the next design so they now they need 7 and 3 fourths but they only have three gallons left so let's figure out how much they're going to need to buy, and we would do that by doing 7 and 3 fourths minus 3. If we did 7 and 3 fourths minus 3, we would get 4 and 3 fourths gallons. So they need 4 and 3 fourths gallons of blue paint. Number 3. Giovanna, Francis, and their dad each carried a 10-pound bag of soil into the backyard. After putting soil in the flower bed, in the first flower bed, Giovanna's bag was five-eighths full, 
Francis's bag was two-fifths full, and their dad's was three-fourths full. How many pounds of soil did they put in the first flower bed all together? So let's start with Giovanna. So she used, if it, at the end, her bag was still five-eighths full, that means that she used three-eighths of her bag. Francis's bag was two-fifths full, so to get to five-fifths, that means that she used three-fifths of her bag. And Dad's was three-fourths full, which means that he used one-fourth of his bag. So we need want to know how many pounds of soil is that. So it was a 10-pound bag. They each had their own 10-pound bag. So we want to know what three-eighths of 10 is and three-fifths of 10 and one-fourth of 10 which is just like multiplying. So I'm gonna multiply. So Giovanna, eight goes into 30, let's see, three times. Three times eight is 24, which means she'd have six eighths left over. And for Francis, 3 times 10 over 5, that would be 30 fifths, and 30 divided by 5 is 6. And lastly, dad, 1 fourth of 10. Four goes into 10 two times, and 2 fourths left over. So we want to know how many pounds they did all together, so we need to add all three of these together. Let's first find a common denominator because we have eighths and fourths here. I'm going to use eighths and convert two fourths into eighths. So two fourths will be equal to four eighths. So this is equal to two and four eighths. So let's add all of those together. So if we add our whole numbers together, three plus six is nine plus two is 11, six eighths plus four eighths is 10 eighths, which would be equal to 12 and two eighths, or 12 and one fourth. Number four, Mr. Chan made 252 cookies for the annual fifth grade class bake sale. They sold three fourths of them and three ninths of the remaining cookies were given to PTA members. Mr. Chan allowed the 12 student helpers to divide the cookies that were left equally. How many cookies will each student get? All right, so they made 252 cookies and they sold three fourths of them. So that means that there were one fourth left. So let's figure out how many were left. So let's do 252, whoops. 252 times one fourth. And we're just gonna divide. Four can't go into two, but four could go into 25 six times. Bring down the two. Four can go into 12 three times. Nothing to bring down and no remainder. So there were 63 cookies left, but three ninths of them were given to PTA members. So of the 63 that were left, three ninths were given to PTA members. So let's figure out how many were given to PTA members. And instead of three ninths, I'm going to make that, I'm just gonna reduce it and make it one third. So that it's smaller numbers to multiply. So let's do 63 divided by three. 3 goes into 6 2 times, 2 times 3 is 6, bring down the 3, 3 goes into 3 1 time, no remainder, nothing to bring down, so 21 cookies were given away to the PTA, and then the students got to divide the cookies that were left, so if 63 remained originally, then they gave away 21, 
That means that they had 42 cookies left that they then had to split evenly between 12 students. So the last step would be 42 divided by 12. And 12 can't go into 4. Let's try 12 times 3. That's 36. So there would be 3, 36. If we subtract, we'll get 6. So there's a remainder here. So 3 and 6 twelfths left over, which is 3 and a half cookies. Each student got three and a half cookies. Number five, using the tape diagram below, create a story of problem about a farm. Your story must include a fraction. Okay, so I'm going to make up a story about a farm. When I think of a farm, I think of cows. And let's see, we have the number 105. And it looks like it's split into five equal pieces. And we want to know something about three-fifths, because three-fifths is what this is pointing to. So 105, something that has to do with cows. Cows produce milk, so gallons of milk, maybe. So we could say a farm, um, the cows on the farm on... produced 105 gallons of milk. Now we need to do something with three-fifths. So maybe the farmer could sell three-fifths of the milk, or we could make it a little bit more challenging and say that the farmer kept this piece, we could say the farmer kept two-fifths of the milk. And sold the rest. How much milk, since we want to know what this part is, we're going to ask about how much milk did the farmer sell. So if maybe use this one, maybe try to make your own that's similar to this one. Just try maybe something with chickens and eggs or something like that. Be creative and try and think of your own.